Hi, in this <coughs> tutorial we're going to look at managing your colour with the new OCIO in Affinity version 2 on iPad. Now this is all Affinity apps on all platforms. And what is OCIO anyway? So let's have a look. Now we're only dealing with the iPad in this version. It's available on the desktop, but it's slightly different on the desktop because you're generally dealing with 32-bit images and there are a few other additions that you'll need to apply there and we'll do those in another tutorial I think. But on the iPad we can use it for film quality grading of images which is great news for VFX, film and 3D artists. There is now added support for OCIO version 2 so config files including the more advanced features available in OCIO version 2 can now be used. Open Color IO is what OCIO stands for and it's an open source color management system that allows users to easily manage their color throughout all stages of the production pipeline in a predictable and consistent way. It's largely used in motion picture films, animations and things like that, but of course that's where Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer particularly excel because they can produce graphics for those um, areas. Open Color IO version 2 support is now available in all Affinity apps and the question is what is Open Color IO and why is it useful? Importantly how do you set up OpenColorIO with an OCIO configuration in Affinity Photo on the iPad? And you can also use Designer if you like. I'll try and show you all of this, but first, nothing happens without the all-important configuration file, which is called, oddly enough, config.ocio. And there's some sample files you'll probably use, which are ECR, EXR files, sorry, which are 32-bit files. See the downloadable archive on my website or copy that link there, which will take you to that site where you can download the configuration file and some sample images. The file's 450 megabytes in size, so give it a moment to bring it all down. Now, navigate to the folder where you unpack the archive, preferably on your computer. Try not to use it on a remote site. Now, the folder is called JR Blender. So, select the JR Blender folder that contains the config OCIO file. You don't need to select the config OCIO file itself. Just select the Blender folder and click Open. Now, open Affinity Photo, select Settings, select Color, and choose the OCIO package. Navigate to the folder where you unpack the archive, preferably on your computer or the iPad, obviously. Select the JR Blender folder where the config OCIO file is placed and just press Open. Remember, as I just said before, you don't need to try and select the file. You can't. Just select the folder. You don't need to select the config IO file itself. Once you're successful with that, the file will begin downloading to set up the configuration. When downloading is done, it just goes back to the screen and select Done. Now, you can open the ECR samples archive, which comes with that download folder, and select an image. Now, I'm using the adjuster.exr image. You can see it there. And I'm using that one to start with. And I'll also use another one in a moment. You'll see that Photo converts the document from the default color scheme to scene linear. That's the message. You can, you've probably seen that come up before when you bring in images from different sources. And you can see it clearly there. On the iPad, you'll see the control tools appear on the left and the top of the screen. 
Don't move any of those yet. Don't touch any of those. We're going to add a non-destructive adjustment in a moment. That's a good thing about adjustment layers. They're non-destructive. Now I've opened another example. Let's open example 2, which is called on the in the archive sample 1280 by 853. Obviously the dimensions of the image. It's rather an unusual looking image and I, and I quite like it. But we're going to use that one to make some changes. Now let's just check the film is what we want in terms of bit depth and size. From the documents menu select convert document and it will show the image settings in the top toolbar. Don't alter them, we're just checking. You can see it there, RGB slash 32 and it's a HDR type image. And the colour space is sRGB 1966 linear and a few other things there which we don't need to worry about because we're just checking. Yep, it is RGB 32. Now bring up the adjustment selection panel on the right hand side. You can see it over there. We're going to create an OCIO non-destructive adjustment layer for this image. Now when you select OCIO you can see it is one, two, three, it's the fourth line down OCIO. When you select that you'll see the OCIO adjustment pop up. The panel will pop up there towards the bottom and it should be blank, source space and destination space blank. So just as in the help file, let's set the source space, space to ACESCG and the destination space to SRGB. You can see it's changed it slightly there already. You can see that the adjustment layer is selected in the layers panel and as always, you can select or deselect that layer. Now here it is with a little video playing there. And it selected it and deselected it and then selected it again. And it changes the image there. By switching the layer off and on, you can see the effect immediately. And it hasn't destroyed the original image. And that video showed that. So let's have a look again at the little gear wheel. We're going to set the colours on this one to something more interesting. Although that's quite a quite a nice gold colour there, and everyone likes gold. Now I've set the source space in linear to CIE XYZ D65, and the destination is again SCES CG, and it's changed it from that rich gold to a more rose gold colour. And you can see it doesn't just apply it to bits of the image. This is the power of OCIO. It applies it to the entire image, throughout the image. Everything has that colour space applied to it. Lastly, you can save the document as a normal Affinity Photo file or Designer if you're using that one. But when you export it, because it's a 32-bit file, make sure you export it as an HDR type file. And you can see I've got there HDR selected. But not to be confused, you can of course export the image as a PNG though, and it looks just the same. Slightly different of course, because it's PNG, but essentially it looks the same. So, I'll leave it up to you to experiment with that. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you would please and click on the thumbs up to like it. Share it with your friends. Have some fun. Change your films and you'll, you can make your images look a lot like film sets.